Hi, Dr. Bear here, and I wanted to make for you a quick video on annotating a plot. So, what I have here is a script that for, it starts off in line 8 by making a x vector, and it starts at a minimum of negative 2, maximum of positive 2, as you can see from line 4, and I use a uh, 201 points. So, from that, I calculate a y vector. I take the sine of 2 pi times x, and then I add this offset, a vertical offset, v. And then I do some plotting. Here's the plot command, and I save, I save the handle to the plot in this data plot variable. And then we do some more formatting. I set the font name to times, font size to 24, and I give x label and y labels, and I set the interpreter to LaTeX. So if I run that, I have this plot. I'm going to dock it. It's a pretty nice sinusoid. Uh, the, there's the X label, the Y label. You can see that the center of this in the range is 1.5, and that comes from this offset right here. OK, so what we want to, let's add some annotation to this. So one way to do it is to use the hold on command. What we're going to do is we're going to draw a new line. And so I want to use hold on and hold off so that we, in between the hold on and hold off, we can add new commands and they will be plotted on top of this other plot. Now if we didn't do that, new plot commands would erase and overwrite the plot. Let's draw a vertical line at the offset. So the way we can do that is we'll put offset mark, that's the handle to our new line and we're going to give it x data and y data and I'm just going to borrow the line width from above and so what do I mean by x data and y data? Well I want it to go from negative 2 to positive 2 so what we'll do is we'll put in here x data in a vector x min x max and then for the y data we'll put the vertical offset so the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to have v times 1, 1. And that, that means now I only have to change one little number if I want to change where the line goes. So I'll plot that, or I'll run it, and you can see there's the new offset line. And maybe we want to change it to a line style that's dashed. So I'm going to put a comma here and then continue the command on the next line with three dots, three periods and we'll set the line style to dashed. And if I save that and run it again, you see now my line is dashed. And uh, we'll add some text that tells the viewer what that line is all about. We'll use the text command, and what we can do is we can specify an x-coordinate and a y-coordinate and a string. So the x-coordinate will be x max, the y-coordinate is going to be V, the vertical offset, and the text we want to say, for now, we'll say offset, so I specify a string. And if I run that, there it is, you can see it's tiny, it really, the font doesn't even match what we have, so what I'm going to do is I'll make it bigger, I'll copy from the set command on line 14, and paste, and so if I run this, again, now it's bigger, and maybe we want the color of offset to match the color of the line which we've stored in a variable offset mark. So the way I do that is I put comma and then dot 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 and we're going to specify the color and we're going to set it to be the color uh, actually so the way we do this is we type offset mark that's the variable we're referencing and then we use its color property so it has a color property and we're just getting that and so now, if I run it, we the color of this text matches the color of the line. Now, just uh, as an aside, I could specify the color as an RGB triple. So I'll comment that out. And the RGB triple has red, green, blue. So we'll put 1 for red, 0 for green, 0 for blue. And we're going to get a red line. Or, sorry, red text. See that the text is now red. I could make it green. 
uh, that's hard to see. So if maybe if I reduce it 0 0.5, it's a darker green that's harder, that's, that's easier to see. Okay, that's an aside. We'll get rid of the RGB. Now, a more interesting thing, instead of just using this offset, is let's use another kind of string that tells us what the value of the offset is. I'm going to put here a new variable, offset string, and we'll we'll make it be uh, we'll make it be v for now. So in the text command, we'll put offset string. Save that, run that, and you see there's the v. Now of course. I could uh, make it nicer and put the dollar signs around it and then specify that this text should have the interpreter LaTeX and let's see what happens there. Okay, so then it becomes nice, scripty, like my X and Y. The last thing we'll, we'll do here is add the value. So to do that, well, we can use the num to string command. And so the num to string command works like this. I'll put it here, we'll call it V string equals num to string of v. And if I run this, notice I didn't put the semicolon to suppress the output. So we see it here, v string is 1.5 and I can type class vstr just to show you. Uh, it is in fact a string, it's actually an array of characters. So we can add that to offset string by doing the horizontal concatenation operation. That is, we make it into a vector like this, and we append v s t r. So v is a one element vector. Actually, it's a three element vector because it has the dollar signs. And then we append to it the new string. And I'm actually going to get rid of this second dollar sign. I'm going to put equals. And then we're going to add another string that has the dollar sign the closing dollar sign. And if we run that now, you can see here the text has shown up, uh, but it's a little bit off the screen. I'll just show you one last thing, and that's the alignment of the text. I can change that. So the text point is 2 and V, which is right there. Notice that's to the left and center of the actual text string. I can change it so that we have, uh, let's, let's set the uh, horizontal alignment to center and watch what happens to that. So now the text string is centered on that point that we specified, x, max, and v. Well, the next thing to do is I want to elevate the, the text right above that point. And so what we'll put is vertical alignment and we'll make it bottom. So that point, uh, x max v, will be at the bottom of this string. So we'll run that, and there it is. Oh, and I forgot, there's actually one more thing I'd like to do for you here. And I'll show you how to do some vertical lines. So to get a vertical line, I'm going to add text before this hold on. And I want a line that goes from 0.5 to 2.5 on the y-axis and maybe we'll put it at minus one on, uh, in the x domain. So uh, we want MATLAB to dynamically define the limits of our graph. It's usually good at doing that. So I'm going to get the y limits of this axis using the ylim command. So I'll make a variable yrng equals ylim ylim is the command that gets us that. So I can use it both to set or get the y limits. And so as I run this, you can see that it returns yrng 0.5 to 2.5, so like that. And I can use that now and making a vertical line. So let's put in a vert line. And we said the x point is going to be negative 1. So to make it a vector, I multiply it by that vector of 1s. And the y data then should be yrng. And if we plot this, you see a very thin line. I'm going to borrow from above. 
line width to line style dashed. Uh, and let's even set the color to something darker like that and we run that there's our vertical line so that's the quick video on annotation if you liked it found it helpful please like the video and share it subscribe to the channel thank you have a great day bye now